Okay, so good evening everyone. I forgot to click on my talk button. It happens from time to time, so I just want to welcome you all. Uh, sorry of the little blank. Bonsoir à toutes et à toutes, and uh, welcome to tonight's presentation of OTF Connex, uh, titled Next the Tricks, Rules That Break, and Rules That Expire in Grade 4 to 10 Mathematics, with Matthew Aldridge. Um, we have a relatively small group tonight. Uh, it's always a great opportunity for participation, so please don't hesitate to, um, to jump in at any time. Uh, Matthew's sessions are always extremely interactive and, and, and informal. Um, so as I said, don't hesitate to submit your ideas and your questions in the chat box throughout uh, the evening. Uh, as usual, I would like to thank you all for taking time away from your families to meet us tonight over RTF Connects to share your ideas and your experiences uh, with us. Et comme d'habitude, je voudrais également profiter de l'occasion pour souhaiter la bienvenue à nos collègues franco ontariens We are definitely thrilled to have each and every one of you with us tonight, and it's also an absolute pleasure to welcome Matthew Aldridge. Matthew is a resource teacher of mathematics in the alternative program of the Peel District School Board. Over the years, he has become um, well known for his conferences, uh, his presentations, his TED Talks and webinars. He's worked with uh, OTF Connex uh, a number of times. Uh, he's also well known for his famous one-line resume. Uh, he typically um, uses that one line to introduce himself. So in his own words, this is how Matthew likes to be introduced. Matthew is a father, educator, TEDx speaker, thinker, writer, and tweeter. And I'll close the virtual quotation marks. Um, so at this point, I'm going to invite Matthew to take over. Uh, and, um, and go ahead, Matthew. The class is yours. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for coming tonight. I know that uh, it's a bit of a busy night. A lot of people are watching the Raptors. And also, it is Ontario Mathematics Educators Conference. So some people, actually, um, I'm in competition with Joe Bowler tonight, so she's the keynote speaker, uh, and perhaps you've seen her or can can see her sometime. But thanks for coming out. Um, and also, this these were um, extra webinars opened up by OTF, the latest block. So it's great uh, that we have them. So keep coming out through the month of May. Um, my friend John Jonathan So is coming up later this month, and also the. The cap of the season is Kyle Pierce and John Orr, which is always great. And there's a number of non-math ones as well. Um, so do keep coming out when you have the chance. Uh, also, the recordings um, will live on afterwards, um, which is a great thing, because people that aren't here tonight may want to watch them. I did do one a couple months ago for TVO, and um, it was about their Empower platform. And there was just a couple people that watched it, and there was three of us facilitating, but we knew that the recording would live on, and uh, that's important too, that uh, it's 2018, and we can get the professional development uh, when we need it. Um, okay, that said, tricks. What do I have to say about tricks? Well, I guess I wanted to do a session where we talked about... Um, where we talked about certain tricks and how that's usually, in almost all cases, a bad thing. And I wanted to highlight a resource which is literally called Nix the Tricks, a crowdsourced resource made by teachers that talks a lot about that. And then I wanted to explore a few tricks um, for ourselves. And for that, we're going to use the Mathies Notepad tool a lot. Um, I do. As Michelle talked about, I do like to do um, heavily constructivist sessions uh, where we're putting our learning in, into play. And um, any participation, especially with a small group, we have a chance to go a little slowly. That's good. And um, hopefully go in depth. I found when I used to do these webinars, I was cramming in lots and lots of content. So it's too easy to lecture too much. but we need to do mathematics to learn how to teach mathematics. So I'm trying to keep the focus there when it, when it belongs. Um, the challenge will be, like, when we need stuff in the chat room, like, feel free to put lots and lots of stuff in, and I will too. Um, it's that sort of, like, brainstorming element or um, idea generation can be a little harder with a smaller group. And then you'll notice 
the Google slide version happens to be right on the screen. That's so you can have it. And then you can just make a copy in your own drive. And then, so let's say if you were to take something and use it in your class or show it to some teachers, you could. Or you could just change my name for yours and just use it if that works for you. Um, but in all seriousness, it's 2018, so you've got to have the slides. Um, I do like to keep things simple. I'm most known for tweeting about math education and then thinking about stuff. And I think we're humans, so we're good at thinking about stuff, or at least we should be. I'm saying stuff, but I think a lot about how best to teach mathematics and lots of other things. So just one little slogan for you tonight. I'm just giving you, actually, I'm giving you one on the next slide too. But like, what if every kid really did say that this mathematics we're doing is surprising and it's wonderful and we're playing playing with numbers and other mathematical objects. You know, and what if it was that? And so I came to this point where I wanted kids to say that. And I wanted kids playing with interesting ideas of mathematics. And so I kind of got um I kind of got to thinking, well, mathematics is surprising. And there's this whole world out there that's full of these strange and wonderful things. And we can express them in the language of mathematics. You know, but sometimes in school it's easy to just, well, here's your, here's your technique, your method, here's your trick, here's what you need to do on your test, here's the formula. Sometimes maybe, and like we've all been there, maybe because of time we need to fall back on that. Um, but mathematics is a lot more interesting than that. And um, we need to build that conceptual base for kids. Uh, so sometimes I've, I've started saying lately that math is or it could be all about play. You know, and that for me is not some kind of fancy pedagogy or, or rule. It's just that, you know, like we play a lot in kindergarten and that's the official curriculum and then we just kind of forget about it. Maybe we play a little bit in primary and then and we forget about it. And particularly in math classrooms, it doesn't have to be that way. So it could be the most playful, playful thing uh, of them all. We need to make mathematics come to life. Uh, you could always watch this TEDx talk if you like. A guy I worked with did watch it the other day and we were talking about it. And I just, I came up with a bunch of things that I thought could be in this playful pedagogy. There's some nice examples of big ideas in the talk. Um, the link's coming up. You can just watch it if you like. I just left it in to to show you what I was thinking. Um, play, so according to Francis Sue, who did a great talk uh, called Mathematics for Human Flourishing, which also closed out uh, the NCTM con con uh, excuse me, conference in Washington last week, um, he basically talks about play as a, a really basic human desire. And, so, and, and that desire can be suppressed in schools. And so that's where I was going with it. That was my... Um, that was my idea for uh, this, this little TED Talk. So if you ever feel like it, um, please do. <coughs> Actually, since we're taking our time and I'm giving it time to breathe, I wanted to say one more t thing about that. Um, there is a great, great Kitchener Waterloo teacher named Andrew Baronski. He puts on TEDx Kitchener Ed. And, um, this is what I spoke at, a uh, truly wonderful event. I will go this year just to watch. Um, watch out for TEDx Kitchener Ed. The most, not all, it's not all about mathematics. We had wonderful talks about equity, um, inspiring black youth, all, all kinds of different things. Truly great event. Um, to today's session, so you know what you're in for. I said grade 4 to 10 because, so what happens is, so kids learn to count and that's kind of kindergarten, and that, that continues into grade one, and then they learn to add and subtract, and then multiply, then divide, and then a bunch of other stuff comes in, like the order of operations, and you're going to be working with fraction operations, you're going to be working with decimals and percents, and so kids kind of think, well, whole numbers are it, right? And they learn how to do operations with whole numbers, and then things really get flipped on their head. And if I were to tell you to multiply a half times a third, 
I know that you know it's one sixth. I'm not sure that you can tell me too much about why. Maybe, maybe not. And that's one example where things just start to break and fall apart. Um, more formulas come in. There is the sort of arbitrariness of order of operations. So it is that way. And every kid just says bed mass, bed mass, bed mass, um, which is not a trick on its own, but could be part of a trick. So that's where I'm going tonight. It's a sampling. OK, this is the minds on question. Very, very difficult multiplication question. As soon as you have the answer, just put it in the chat box. <laughs> I know, you're quick with it. And um, that's what we want, because we want kids not to be fooled. Um, we want them to not just turn it vertical and start computing. Uh, I saw a wonderful blog post by Keith Devlin, Stanford professor, this morning. Um, this morning is when I saw his blog post. Uh, so he's a pretty passionate advocate for the idea that arithmetic was once essentially like the gateway to mathematics, and in lots of ways it still is. But he was talking about how computers compute now more than ever. So in past centuries, and even a generation ago, you had to be really, really good at calculating to be a mathematician. And now sometimes machines do that work. And the good news is that um, that frees us up to think. So I'll say, well, OK the best outcome here. I don't have to do any math, any mathematics at all because it just goes to zero. You know, like whatever, all this stuff, bunch of stuff times zero. And actually, we're just going to put that there. Bunch of stuff times zero goes to zero. Anyway, I don't think the kids in your class would, they would probably read le uh, left to right, and they would probably get to the zero, and they they probably know what to do. But um, just a little minds on. You could try and trick your kids. Now, here is where I point out that Nix the Tricks is a PDF download of the free kind at nixthetricks.com. Um, the available at Amazon, I've, I haven't checked out, but it, I'm guessing they printed it, um, you know, in paper for some nominal fee. Uh, Tina Cardone. U.S. math teacher was the original author. MTBOS, generally U.S., but North America and across the world, refers to math, Twitter, blogosphere. So when I say crowdsourcing, is because people were contributing what they thought were tricks, and they were contributing what they thought, um, well, yes, were tricks should be avoided. Um, and they made a bit of a distinction between mnemonics, which aren't necessarily tricks. Um, actually, I'm going to let you explore a few of the ideas. Uh, I'm just going to note here for the recording and posterity that we're going to take five minutes and we're going to go and look at Nix the Tricks. And then if you could just bring back one thing from your quick browse and just put it in the chat box, um, I'll do the same. So we have a bit of a record of um, just ex exploring the book. Um, so if you are watching the recording in the future, Feel free to jump ahead five minutes. Um, let's take five minutes to just open it up and have a quick flip through.
Okay, so we're back. Yeah, and then, so you'll have time to explore that later. Um, so we had a few ideas come into the chat box. Um, cross multiplying is one that we we often fall back on, right? Um, a lot of them, a lot of them we fall back on. Yes, and so if they can explain to me why it works, they can use it. There's a little more on that coming up. I came up with a, a name that, um, for that. Oh, and here was the quote. Yes, of course, this is what we just did. But here's the nice quotation. A trick is magic. Something kids understand is a shortcut or rule. If they can explain the process, it loses trick status. Not all shortcuts are bad. Uh, and it's particularly true in the case of things like standard algorithms, where they're perfectly designed to shorten calculation processes. But the only thing is, if you know, if kids don't know why they work, that's just a really bad thing. And there's time and a place to build the conceptual foundation. We must, and we must do so. It's so, so, so important. Um, I'm going to have you, there's two particularly, in my opinion, egregious ones here. Um, the butterfly method, which is not addressed in Nixitrix, um, but and then another one coming up. I think it's like three minutes, and I think it's worth our time for you to watch this one, um, so you can see what you're up against. To, uh, to be perfectly fair, there's lots of like well-meaning people creating these instructional materials. They're just not um, what I believe in. So it takes a couple of minutes to watch um, this one, um, and then we'll be back. Okay, I'll just start talking again. Yeah, it's um, there's actually a number of of those on YouTube. I think with the U.S. Um, the advent of what they call Common Core math, which you often see um, poked fun at on Facebook, and um, it, with the advent of that, you're seeing a, a lot of these instructional materials spring up. And my first question about anything like this is, what do butterflies have to do with mathematics? And so. Maybe like the shape of the wings might help some kids remember, but you, you can do better. It's I did pick turtle multiplication. We can do better. Um, we'll just put three minutes on the clock for the turtle. This one, I don't know. It's pretty crazy. You can just watch it for yourself, and we'll come back in three minutes and see what you think of turtles and multiplying. Um, so important to know what we're up against here. Yeah, I can just start talking because you probably have the gist of it. Um, my action reaction was, well, the part that ended up screen captured for the the video link, um, I guess I'll just pick just one thing. Actually, the collar is weird. Like, I don't know why the turtle has a collar. That part's weird. But the laying of an egg is arguably not even correct. I mean, you may have had a teacher who insisted on that zero just to make things nice and neat. Or you may have had a teacher that, um, uh, insisted on a blank space, as in there is no value in that spot. Uh, and so no value is not necessarily the same as zero. So it's arguably not even correct. Um, but yeah, so I have to remember about something about laying turtle eggs in the collar, and I have to um, think about multiplying at the same time. And so to, yes, to your point, it's not 1 times 9, it's 1 times 90. That's definitely where I'm going with it. Um, one of my favorite things to do now, that I've taught myself to do it, is two-digit by two-digit multiplication in my head. And yes, it is the era of number talks. And I was at a parent session once. I wasn't leading it, but a coach friend was, and she had them doing, the numbers weren't quite this big, but it was, um, she had parents doing it in their head, and she led the number talk with the strategies on the chart paper. But ever since then, I don't pull out a calculator right away. Uh, I try and think about what's what's happening. 
So we don't need to turn to the standard algorithm right away. That could be maybe part of what you do. Okay, so this is the task. And so we want to go to Matthew's notepad tool, which is like, that's like the side takeaway from this session because it's a powerful, like, um, annotation and um, doing the work tool that works on computer, you know, like Chromebooks, laptops, and iPads. It is the Matthews.ca, if you don't know it, everything is created by the province. And what's even better, they keep making these tools even, even better. So about a month ago, I don't know if anyone was in it, but we did a session on fractions. So in that specific case, I'd given them, it was two different tasks. So it was actually like a, like a task that exists. So in the form of um, a JPEG that they could download. Um, and then so then you upload it on the other end in, to Matthews. I think in this case, we're just going to use it to diagram our, out our thoughts. Um, my clue for you would be, clue, well, you can think of it however you like, but come up with the answer to 49 times 21, but show something interesting about multiplication. In other words, I don't know if I'd have room to show it in Matthews, but you could think about an elastic band of 21 units stretched 49 times. I might not show that on the screen. And that would illustrate this just as well, or arguably even better than the standard algorithm because it's visual. Um, maybe you do something, play with the standard algorithm, do something with that. Or maybe you sketch a diagram. Um, I'm curious to see what you come up with. And I need to put my money where my mouth is, so I'll go do one as well. Um, for those potentially watching in the future, we are going to take five minutes to do some work and, and possibly upload our work. Um, and I would encourage you to, to get familiar with Matthews.ca as well. We could say like maybe five minutes. Oh, and so yes, what we need to do is to email Michelle the, um, the work. So. Um, this part would take a little bit of explaining if you're not familiar. In, in Matthews.ca, you would be able to, now, you can download your stuff, which is amazing. Um, but the other option is, if you have the Windows screen snipping tool or any screen snipping tool, screen snip, save it to your desktop, email him. And what we do in these cases is we put it directly into the slideshow. And one big reason for that, if it was a, a class full of kids, we'd want to see all of their thinking. Because the more thinking we see, the better we understand what's happening. And so if we see each other's thinking, that's just extremely important. Um, so two ways. When you see Matthew's notepad, you'll see that uh, you can't actually download it. I'm just making sure I didn't dream that. Yes, you can save files. Um, so it's either that or the screen snip. It's okay, so we'll just take five minutes. And just to be clear, come up with the answer somehow. But try and show me something interesting about how you understand multiplication outside of the standard algorithm, we'll say. But you might use that to like check and prove, or you might pull that apart.
I just want to mention that I received an email from Tiffany, but I cannot open it. I don't know what attachment that is. Um, it doesn't open on my Mac, Tiffany. I'm sorry about that. And I just got another one from Sarah. I'm going to load that one straight away. And uh, it's, all, again, a notepad. I, I don't know how to open them. They don't open on my Mac, unfortunately. I don't know if uh, Matt can open them, but I, I can't for some reason. It's just tell, telling me that they can open them. So I would need I would need a screenshot or I would need a JPEG. So yeah, I was just trying to get mine in right now. Let me try, try and see. Save it as yeah. JPEG. You you can take a screenshot of your screen. That works well. That's my method. That's my go-to for sure. But uh, uh, the, the notepad the notepad um, icons. Unfortunately, I cannot open them in Blackboard. It's uh, it's rejecting them basically. Under load content, should I be able to load in my JPEG? Yes, load content, absolutely. Oh, that's weird. The good news <laughs> is mine is quite similar to but one it, that... It only works with JPEG. It doesn't work with PNG. And oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, it just didn't initially appear. Okay, we'll go back through it. Um, we have a couple. Mine was messy. Um, <laughs> and... I've developed this go-to where I, I think of some rectangle. Is my pen still here? I think of some rectangle. And that's why, because we can define multiplication as some rectangle with a certain length and width, right? And like we kind of take that for granted because we have all our compressed knowledge as adults and as teachers of mathematics. But we can show that to kids, and it's a powerful tool. Some rectangle of a certain length and certain width. Um, then I was thinking of good ways to break it down. Uh, I was thinking, well, okay, 40 times 20, that'll be my big chunk. And then 1 times 40, 9 times 20, 1 times 9. It didn't have to be those chunks. Uh, we have another one coming. Yeah, the area model. And so, yeah, and this one is... Identical. What's funny is because I was going kind of fast, and I'm like, I hope this is right. And then, sure enough, we both have 1029. That's actually really nice use of Matthew's notepad. I originally had the grid, and I was trying to be like nice and neat, but that's wonderful. Um, so you split it that way. What was interesting was I didn't even. I think we followed the standard algorithm, but I, and I, for me, it was kind of by. I guess I, I guess I did it I've, with some practice. I've started to do it naturally, um, but we can show kids how to pick these chunks, and we can help them visualize rectangles. And I'm I'm all about visualizing rectangles now. Yes, and so here we we go to the area model, and we see our partial products, and we total them. So how many kids just think that way when they? set this up like they were taught. And how many kids are changing this representation into this representation? I wish it was all of them, quite frankly. So there's always such a rush to get here. Um, we mostly use area model. There's other things we could have used. We could have played with the fact that 49 copies of 21, uh, we could have played with the fact that 7 is a divisor of each and done some factoring. It's probably a pretty more advanced strategy. There's a number of things we could have done. Right, and so and sadly, that's what we've got right now. Feel free to play uh, with it. My email uh, was at the start. You can email me anytime if you do something cool, or kids do, which is even more important. This one I just, this was an example I had, which was, 22 times 12. I just happened to use this example in a longer thing I wrote, um, which was actually a book about teaching through problem solving. And so this was just one example we considered. So again, 20 times 10 is 200, and then 20 times 2, and uh, 20 times 10, and then um, 2 times 2. So in this case, it's 264. But start visualizing some rectangle. Um, this one might be nicer for doubling and halving. 
like the 11 times 24 would be the same. Does that help us? Okay, maybe not. What else can we do? Um, I have this idea, and I came up with it a while back. It's just an idea that um, kids should have to get their algorithm license. That, uh, we before they um, before they use it. Okay, that's so tiny, I can't read it. That's not going to work. But so that kids should have to get their algorithm license. And then as soon as they show us, hey, I know how this works, it adds up the partial products, then they're good to go. I think that's important. So oh, some of my students might have gone for 49 times 20 plus 49. I missed that. So they would further break it down, 49 times 10, and then add that again, and then plus 49. And then so tie in place value, like 22 times 10 plus 2 times 22. Yeah, and so the, we have all these ways of seeing and breaking down. And that's what we want. So if you do the number talks out loud, you're going to get there. But I think it's validating and, and valuing mental math. I stated earlier that we don't necessarily need to calculate as much as we used to. And so because calculation is not drudgery anymore, I think that we should actually make calculation fun, by the way, because this fluency and the, the playing with numbers is so important, but um, it's just in how we do it. Like worksheets are drudgery, but playing with numbers is interesting. Numbers are interesting. Um, next example comes from, it was straight from Nix the Tricks because she and they talk about PEMDAS, bid mass, bod mass, bed mass. So most kids tend to go for bed mass. But, um, and they just know it, they just throw it out there. They just say, oh, do I have to use bed mass without thinking about, you know, why that would be or what that actually means which if you've ever taught grade seven is one of the most interesting things to, to teach because they know all four standard operations. But then um, this sort of arbitrary thing comes in uh, and th th that mathematicians have agreed that there's a certain order that things should happen in. And we can't necessarily justify it for any particular reason. And so hence the mnemonic. Um, there's some nice videos out there that about why bed mass and PEMDAS are, are wrong. People have nicely uh, taken them apart. I just included one link to um, where this problem came from. And it was one of those ones, if you have Facebook, it'll pop up and um, people will try and trick you. Uh, maybe put in... Yeah, this one, like, families talking about this stuff. So I think that's one advantage of the social media era. If this is popping up on Facebook, the other ones are those ones with, like, um, burgers and fries, where it's like that, and drinks. It's like the algebraic system is disguised with symbols, like burgers, fries, and drinks. Those are cool, too. And I've seen teachers use those. Like, those are actually cool. And um, the old uh, tips resource, which is still good, there's a few of those in there, and it was written before Facebook, so it's cool. Um, this one, feel free to put in the chat box what you think the answer is and what your reasoning is. Uh, I wouldn't feel bad on um, having varying answers on this one. Uh, more to the point, I would suggest this one was probably written to be confusing. Probably. And it was probably written for viral trickery and people can laugh and say, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, the burgers and fries are cool. Well, let's get, so one possible answer is one. Do we see anything else as possible? So kids who are trained to, multiplication has to go first. So 9 is possible. Let's see, 6 divided by 2 is 
3. 3 times 3 is 9. So if they're trained to go from left to right, then they're kind of ignoring the sort of um, 2 times the bracket. So 1 and 9 are possible. I'm going to show you one more, which is why people shouldn't feel bad. And this is explained nicely in that article. But 6 over 2 times 1 plus 2. And that's because could the dividing sign actually mean this? Um, which the, would make the answer um, 1 as well. So, but for a different reason. Um, because you could see it as a whole dividing bar. Yeah. OK, so two possible answers. And so people would just say, oh, no, I'm sure it's 9. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's 1. Um, this one, where you really want to trick kids, is where division is first or subtractions before adding and see if they have any idea um, what they're doing. And this was an awesome idea from Nick's The Tricks, Jima. Grouping, exponents, multiplication, and then addition. So sometimes you could think of it as um, grouping as um, things in brackets or things grouped together instead of just plain old hunt out the brackets. Um, because there's things like multiple brackets, nested brackets, big brackets, small brackets, square brackets, uh, round brackets. And then exponents for sure, and then multiplication and addition. Um, I think what they're going for is that division can be defined as the opposite of multiplication and um, subtraction likewise. So you could build, um, like from the ground up, you typically would build all four operations, starting with adding and then moving to multiplying. Um, so incorrect. 6 divided by 2 times 5 is equal 6 divided by 10. So it's if they strictly follow um, bed mass, no, if they follow bed mass, they're fine. If they follow PEMDAS strictly, they'd be wrong and they'd get 0.6. Um, but whereas this one should be um, 6 divided by 2 times 5. And it should come out to 15. Uh, what am I seeing there? 6 divided by 10, 6 divided by 2 is 3 times 5 is 15. I think there's a space missing here. So it comes out to 3 times 5 is 15. So it's just watching out for that. So going from left, left to right is the key thing. Um, but then also, we might think of levels or strengths of the operation. So stronger operations first. Exponents are first. But groupings and parentheses go first because you can't move on without them. And then the various operations by their, by their strength. Um, so that's the point there. Um, feel free to follow that trail on, on YouTube about why bed mass is wrong. But I mean, you can just see in the fact that bed mass and PEMDAS have um, multiplication and division as opposites. And I've taught a lot of grade 7 and 8, and kids will faithfully hunt down what they know from bed mass or any of the other ones instead of making sense from left to right. Um, but I think we can show them by why going from left to right works. OK, this is one of our key sort of um, rules break things. So I'm going to just, from when I'm little, I'm going to be taught that, OK, multiplication is groups of things, like objects. And all of a sudden, you're going to tell me, no, no, multiplication makes things smaller. What's really happening here? This is the key activity, by the way. I love doing this. There's lots of ways to think about it. Um, we seem to gravitate to the area model, but a number line might do something for you. Um, we're going to allow five minutes for the Mappies tool, because this is um, definitely an important activity. Same thing, though. Like, Do email the work so we can see. That's just so, so valuable.
Okay, I'm just going to get mine in. Oh, I'll bury it. Upload content. Hmm, where is it? Um, this time I'm not seeing mine. Let's see, this time we have one so far. Oh my god, I did... I did uh, something quite like this as well. I need this to upload so you can see how alike I am. So that is multiplication as of fractions as shared area, which is amazing. You can do that with folding paper, and it messes teachers up, so you really want to practice it before you do it with kids. But it is um, quite amazing. Yeah, why will mine not go? So I highly recommend if you want to blow some mines, get paper and do this. You could do one-fourth times one-third. That you can just you click on load content and then you locate yep. it on your screen. If it's a JPEG, it's fine. Or you can just drag it. You can drag it on top of your uh, on top of the window. That works as well. Oh, okay. Let's see where I go. Hmm. Well, it's not appearing. So I'm just about a couple seconds from giving it up here. The dragging is not working. If you click on load content, then you should be able to locate it on your screen, but it has to be a JPEG or a so it screenshot. It definitely is a JPEG. So it, it took a, a while for it to pop up last time, so there's just something with that. Um, I think I can go with... So that was one of the ones I did. And my second one was was actually a a number line. So I want you to think that um, one quarter times one third. Oh, perfect! We have another one to talk about. A quarter times one third. You could think of that as one quarter copies of one third. That's because the one quarter is the multiplier. The one third being the multi multiplicand. And so if you think of one quarter copy of one third, obviously it has to be smaller than one third. Like there's simply there's simply no other way. And so if we start to think of it that way, well it's it's got to be not just smaller, but much smaller. Let's see what else we've got. Now this one I see a third and a fourth. And now this also this neatly illustrates shared area. This is fantastic. Go forth and do this with kids, um, even grade eights, because well what what are they been taught? Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. Oops. And they've been faithfully taught that, and it's easy. So that's an easy thing you encounter in grade eight. But conceptually, it's far from easy. That's a mess. Um, conceptually, it's far from easy. And uh, it's important that they try and figure out what's happening, other than just multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators, because anyone can do that. So it's putting the work into figuring out why that's actually happening. Let's check and see if we have any more comments. Oh, here's a description. I'm starting to print screen. Um, it sounds smaller because I'm talking about a third of a quarter. Drew a square, divided into quarters, then divided each of those into thirds and colored in one of the 12 pieces. So that's what we're looking at, right? Um, wonderful thing to do. I suggest trying the folding paper as well. 
Um, I will just live. Where's my eraser here? Actually, clear that page. Clear that page. Clear that page. Okay. Now imagine you have some number line. Yeah, that's a mess. But we're going to mark. And it moved on me. So that'll be one. That's fine. This will be zero. It's moving around. That'll be somewhere around one half. That'll be around one quarter. That'll be around three quarters. Okay, let me take red color. Um, let's mark. This is one quarter. Oh, it just keeps moving around. It's getting too messy. So we wanted one third, somewhere around here. And we wanted one quarter copies of it. We'll just take blue. Somewhere along here. So now we have to, and then we'll just illustrate the length of the arrow we were initially working with, which was one hole. It was all the way over to here. Now we can get some idea of why the little blue one could be 112. I know it was messy. Um, you know what? With these tools, we have to get in there and make a mess. We have to. If we had chart paper and markers, we'd make a mess too. Um, but so I'm tr I was trying to show that uh, one quarter copy of one third. And so, yeah, there it is. Feel free to, to draw all over it. Um, but so we could use the number line as well. And I think in grade seven, there's a curriculum expectation. We can deal with things like three times one half, or one half times three. And so what's happening there? I think a number line can be really useful. So three copies of one half. OK, sure. One and a half, one whole. Well, sorry, half, one, one and a half. Here's another one. Ah, so we did have a number line. Yeah, that's great. So we had one tw one twelfth marked back. We had one third. Yeah, and we had neat partitions of twelfths, which allowed us to have one third. I'm thinking of a quarter as a third. Yeah, if there's anything else you want to say, because if you were a kid then, and I was um, like sort of uh, teacher explaining your thinking, you'd want to be clear of what you're actually thinking. But my, that was my guess. So we had, actually, did you start with 12s? If it was a classroom, I would ask anyway. I'm going to have, let's just see, one more check and see. Well, tonight's glitch was the screen capture is not showing up. OK, so we're going to leave that be and look at our last example. Well, you commonly do here, uh, ours is not to reason why. Just invert and multiply. OK, but why is that? Uh, and actually, it's much more work to get there. So 3 fifths divided by 1 quarter could be a tricky one. But I think we're going to try the activity one last time because we've done like really, really terrific thinking. Um, and we'll just take five more minutes um, and hopefully get some thinking in on this one. This is hard, right? You're going to remember what you were taught in school, flip it upside down and multiply. And maybe if you do that and get the answer, you can reason out why it actually is. Um, and if you're feeling like, Hopefully you'll do something in Matthews, but there's a nice, really nice Graham Fletcher piece on it, which would be a clue. Okay, last five minutes of heavy thinking.
Um, in this case, um, because it's you worked all day and it's getting to the end of the night, um, I don't blame you that you didn't send me any. But let's leave it at the point here is that, um, okay, so what have kids been taught about dividing? Equal groups, grouping, sharing. So what does it mean to have three-fifths and share groups of one-fourths? That's really hard to think of. Okay, or we may have some bar model, area model. We have three fifths, so we're going to divide that up into one quarter partitions. That could make sense. Okay, but inverting and multiplying, like you were likely taught, gives you, um, sorry, yeah, 12 fifths. Okay, sure, two and two fifths. Does that make sense? Okay, so two groups of one-fourth and two-fifths more groups. No, it kind of doesn't make sense. And I think we can be mindful of teaching, um, mindful of that when we're teaching this. So the explanation in the Graham Fletcher piece is about um, multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's about reciprocals, which is how the second fraction ends up upside down. But uh, just be mindful. And then, so this is one that's commonly deployed. This is one of the worst ones. And it literally has that silly, ours is not to reason why. But even this, uh, even this, we can tackle. And even this, we can make sense of, right? And we can certainly try. And so these last two examples were from grade eight, where they're just, Getting up there, up the ladder of abstraction, as you say, they're going to be using more abstract things, particularly algebra in high school. So I think it's really important to to have that conceptual basis. I think it's very important. So you can make sense of that um, a little later. As we get to wrapping up, if you're still there and there's anything else you noticed in um, Anything else you noticed in the next the tricks that you wanted to mention right now? Um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say about it. Because we had a great, by the way, small group. We definitely had lots of time to breathe, but I'm just going to quickly flip through and see if I wanted to highlight any that are actually in the document. Butterfly method is also known as Jesus fish. I have no idea. Maybe in more religious places in the United States, like the Bible Belt. Make numbers mad, M-A-D, capitals. I've never heard of that. That sounds ridiculous. Backflip and cartwheel. Never heard of that. That's ridiculous. Something about flipping flat fractions. Cross-multiplying we did not cover. Um, we can justify that. Um, so that's where it talks about using the phrase multiply by the reciprocal. So that's in there. There's a nice little proof. Um, and then so cross multiply for solving proportions, like setting that up with having no idea why. Dr. Pepper. Oh, I have no idea. It's just a, it's ridiculous. Uh, debatable ones, you know how when you're a kid you're talking about H-O-M-E-S, well that's the Great Lakes, homes. All, it doesn't say anything about, you know, the um, like acid content of Lake Erie. It just tells you the name of Lake Erie. So it's not a trick so much as it is a mnemonic. But some of these ones that are like mnemonics like foil, first outside, inside, last, is a trick. Like you can teach um, polynomials with the area model, for example, and lots of people do. Uh, and what's another one? So bed mass is a memory trick. It's a mnemonic, but it kind of obscures sense making, which as we come to a close, that's, that's definitely what we're against. Uh, I had another example and I, I just lost it. 
Oh, um, anything in measurement to do with King Henry doesn't mind if it's math or a meters drinking cold milk. I was seeing some kids use that last week. Like, well, it's just a ne memory device. But then I was looking, they were taught this ladder of dividing up and down. Do, are they getting what's happening with the powers of 10? Are they getting, like, why to divide bigger units, smaller unit? I wasn't sure. So King Henry doesn't mind drinking cold milk. It can kind of be both. Actually, I don't think that one's in here. I think perhaps that's a Canadian trick, uh, unless I've missed it. So that one's kind of both. I mean, it's a useful mnemonic if uh, if you're just trying to remember it, but it it can be a trick too. Okay. Any other comments? Oh, we had another one. So so get rid of one quarter by mul okay multiply by reciprocal to keep fraction. Um, multiply by four over one two. And we get 12 fifths. So we can justify it with this perfectly good procedure with the reciprocal. That's good. Thanks for that. That's, that's hard work. Sometimes um, the tough part as teachers is if we weren't taught conceptually certain things, we've never known them conceptually. So that's very literally the case of relearning or learning in a new way. Uh, which is what we must do. So in summary, if you'd like to um, take these slides, I think it'd be wonderful to run an extra trick session. My passion's been grade six, seven, and eight mathematics. And so some of these issues are focused there because a lot of kids totally, totally hit the wall in uh, grade six, seven, and eight, this massive conceptual wall. And it's because they don't have a conceptual basis. Yeah, they can fall back on tricks to get by, but they should not have to. Um, so middle years, kids kids can really fall through the gaps, and I really have a passion about not letting that happen. So, yes, and as, as noted by any, it's hard to get some to change your thinking at that point. Yeah, I know, because you're like, oh, this is a perfectly good procedure. Um, going back to when we did 49 times 21, we were a game, we did it in our heads. I think it's showing them that it's interesting to understand things conceptually, like all the way to the bottom, right? Like just conceptually, like to really, really understand them. It feels better. Uh, I know I've felt better that I've, I've learned things and I, I don't settle anymore. If I'm going to give something to kids, I'm like, well, I need to know why this works. And I make sure I know first. Okay. But I think kids appreciate being treated as sense makers and reasoners in mathematics. Uh, I think I'm going to stop there and turn the mic off. Feel free to tweet or e email me at uh, any point. Um, Twitter is in the slides, but it's at my full name, which is Matthew Oldridge. And yeah, it's definitely harder to forget when you understand versus memorizing. Like certain things like homes for the Great Lakes are indelible. But it says nothing about lakes. It's just a series of names, a sequence of names. But um, if I really, un if you really understand something, you'll hopefully know it forever. Um, and linking back to math is play, surprising, wonderful at the beginning. I think it just feels good to understand things. So I don't think we should underestimate that uh, with kids. Um, okay, I'm going to say thank you very much. Just as we just as we wrap up for the last 10 minutes. And I don't know if the Raptors won. The Blue Jays are kind of in the background. They just played a wild one in Cleveland, but it's a double header, and they're up one nothing. So I'll leave you with that. And uh, thank you very much for coming. That was a really, really terrific one. I, I love using Matthew's notepad. Uh, terrific tool. Uh, let's all use it in our classrooms because it's great. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Matthew. Um, it was really great. I, I agree with you. Uh, and I always like the way uh, your sessions are kind of informal and free-flowing. It's really enjoyable. 
Um, I, I love the way you meander from slide to slide. We can literally hear your thinking and your reflecting along the session, and, and I think that's really great. We, uh, it's a process. It's really a process. And um, Matthew certainly make, made you all uh, work really hard. Um, there was a lot of heavy thinking going on, certainly far above my uh, mathematical skills, but I enjoy uh, seeing all your results coming in. Uh, so I just want to thank you all for your participation tonight and skipping the Raptors game, uh, although it may not be completely um, uh, done, so you may still see the end. Um, but in all honesty, uh, Matt's presentation was probably more entertaining. Anyway, I just want to take another two, three minutes of your time just to um, tell you a few things. We have lots of uh, interesting sessions in the coming days. Um, really too many to um, to tell you about all of them. Um, I just want to maybe point to uh, this one by Jen Rochon on May the 8th. It's a really good one uh, if you know um, the French teachers because we have very few ones a very few sessions in French, and I'll be moderating that one, of course, uh, on May the 8th, so if you know any um, FSL teachers or French teachers, that would be great. Um, and then I'll let you discover all the other ones by visiting the OTF calendar and our resource page. Um, I can't go over all of them tonight, but there's lots of interesting sessions coming up. I also want to let you know that uh, if you're a qualified teacher and you have uh, completed an additional um, uh, qualification course in math, technology, or kindergarten, you may be eligible for $450 subsidy. Uh, that subsidy is still available, and I'm going to paste the link to, um, to the OTF website where you can actually apply for that $450 subsidy. Um, as always, we value your feedback tremendously. Uh, when you are quitting Blackboard, when quitting Blackboard, you will be redirected to a uh, feedback questionnaire. And uh, we would like you to take a few minutes to just uh, give us your feedback. That would be great. And then uh, once you have completed the feedback questionnaire, you will be questionnaire, you will be redirected to another page. Uh, which will allow you to enter your name and your email address, and then you will receive a certificate of participation that you can um, add to your uh, learning resume. And I'm going to paste in the chat box the links to the feedback questionnaire and to the certificate of participation, just in case you are not being redirected properly uh, when quitting Blackboard. And I'm also going to paste tonight's uh, resource page um, that will be live um, in about an hour. I'll, I'll, I'll have everything uploaded onto that page, including the recording. So that's it. I just want to thank you once again for your time uh, tonight, uh, for joining us over RTF Connects. Uh, I wish you a very good evening, and we hope to see you soon on RTF Connects once again. Bonne fin de soirée à tous et à toutes, et à bientôt sur RTF Connects. Merci beaucoup.